Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. Davo, Tom and Callum here for your podcast. So we've got some exclusive content for you this morning. Yeah, well, we... today, right now, whenever you're listening. Yeah. Doesn't well... matter. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> the magic of radio and podcasting, <laughs> hey? Um, but there is a ten- trend going on in TikTok at the moment and it's basically, this is what it says. It says, if someone told you they saw me arguing with a stranger on the street, what would you immediately assume I was arguing with them about? Yeah. So what I thought we could do is go around the circle here and make assumptions of what we would be arguing with a stranger about. Yeah, this yeah, is okay. fun. I do like this trend. Uh, it's a good way to see how well we know each other. I mean, we do spend a lot of time together yep unfortunately uh, not by choice <laughs> trust me <laughs> obligation work. it's definitely not by choice we're shackled here in the studio be- until 10 a.m when we can finally run free i believe this morning callum gave me the urits and i literally said i just needed one more day <laughs> just one more day would have done you well wouldn't it but yeah the weekend isn't enough sometimes between us but if i were to go around the room i'd say uh if i were to see either of you arguing tom i would say someone's called your pug fat <laughs> he's look. He's not too fat. He's, he's lost weight. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Someone's called. You're obviously on the defense now. Someone's called. I'm Ben. Your, your dog is so fat. I'll have you know. Yes. Okay. He was weighing in at about 15 <laughs> kilos, but now he's dropped down to about 12, 13. And on top of that, when we got him as a puppy, he was a big puppy. So like big he was bone. bigger. Big he, bone. Big like bone. Cartman. You could look at his paws from a young puppy age that were ten times bigger than any other scrawny little pug yeah his paws were the 10 times he's bigger powerful. and his ass he's powerful is what <laughs> he is and his ass he is a thick pug it's someone's when i pictured this argument though it's just on rundle street or something in the city here yeah, yeah. Just at the exit at the exit yeah. after a few drinks arguments a bit drink fueled someone said hey mate your dog's obese he's like, not what obese the hell? <laughs> Dave, I'd say someone's ripped into your uh, how clean your car is. Someone said your car is disgusting and has a cheese smell to it. Is that because you've done that and gotten ripped apart? I don't <laughs> yeah, think I so. Yeah, I know from experience. No, I feel like I'm at peace with that, right? I know it's disgusting, so surely. You've, you've come to terms with it, you've oh, accepted it. fully. If I, th- if I was ashamed about it, I think I'd do something about it. But now it's just like, <laughs> it's get in, it's gone. gross. Yeah, too far it's gone. gone. I reckon, Tom, if I was see arguing with a stranger, I'd probably say that someone has put the I before the E or the E before the I, sorry, yeah, and yeah. you're getting really upset about the misspelling yeah. of something. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I was I was playing with this a little bit last night and I was thinking, what would mine be? And I was thinking, oh, somebody using the wrong two or the wrong there. Yeah, that you would. Me. That really does annoy you. Yeah. Uh, sometimes so- we'll write things on the board here to plan a show and Tom will go oh, and rub it off fuck. and rewrite it because he likes it better. Yeah, because <laughs> <I> just swore. <laughs> I, you know what? I didn't Be even I didn't even realise I did it. I was just getting annoyed. Someone's yeah, when people write in lowercase and then uppercase on the board, just stick to one case. Double double uh, double trouble. Someone's written a letter to you saying your dog's fat, but it's got a P H A T. Oh. I reckon if Callum was arguing with a stranger, it would be because they asked him to pay back the money he owes them. <laughs> <laughs> Dodging, deflecting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be out of there. I'd be out of there. I'd be holding the the briefcase of money and I'd be uh, in that taxi for sure. Right, well, Davo, (sighs) I reckon if I saw you arguing with a stranger on the street, I would safely assume it's because uh, they've messed up your coffee order, haven't gotten the iced latte right, and they've uh, given you the wrong thing. You guys this don't happen, know though. me at this all. This did happen, though. You this happened like, the other day. The, with the juice. What? The yeah, juice. The juice when we went down to the parade for breakfast, they made you wait 20 minutes. And then you always complain about your iced lattes not being nice enough, the yeah. right coffee. True, complain, I am fussy. You do complain about food a bit as well when you get a sandwich and yeah. it's never right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's never right. True, yeah. Someone messed up my sanger <laughs> order. Absolutely go nuts at them. Yeah, they, they've got onion on it when you ask them to leave it out. <laughs> well, I'm allergic. <laughs> <laughs> it's life or death And uh, Callum Callum could literally be anything uh, But I'm thinking more so Like they've taken a bite of his food While they've gone while he's gone yeah, to the bathroom yeah. Tom has seen me in an oh, argument I Out the front that. of the Yeah I know Tom. you have Trust me I still hear about it It's so funny <laughs> I'm so glad that gr- Like grind your gears so much That it's affected you months later yeah. Like it's the type of psychological <laughs> no, warfare I still I'm in for resentment for it for sure Yeah good <laughs> Well, on that note, let's get into the podcast. (laughs) 
You're listening to Dave O'Tom and Callum, the podcast. It's well known on this show. We like to use this as a bit of a platform to brag about things when oh. things when things are going well in our lives. Mean? I know you do, at least. <laughs> Rarely. Yeah, true. <laughs> well, what happened over the weekend is this is my chance to give a bit of a brag. <laughs> I, uh... Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, so I'm at home and I decided, you know what, I, it's a Saturday morning and I'm I'm working up on the, on the slightly dusty end. I looked in the mirror. I was looking jacked. <laughs> <laughs> I looked awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the bathroom mirror as I woke up and I decided, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna have a productive day. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some gym stuff today. Yeah, good work. Okay, yeah. so you got exercising, did you? Yeah, I got exercise. I decided just to do gym stuff at home, got the uh got the weights out, we couldn't be bothered driving all the way to the gym. Yep. So I was like, you know what, it's a nice day, just do it in the backyard, get a bit of a tan going. Oh is this the flex? Is this, this, is this you the, flexing? This is right me now? flexing that I worked out on the weekend. Well yeah. done. Ooh, <laughs> so it's, it's a weird combination of using like the metal uh sunray catcher while doing some dumbbell weights at the same time. <laughs> 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 Two birds with one stone, tanning and gym. I yeah. did notice that you were that swole this morning. You couldn't get through the door here. I had yeah. to shimmy on through. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought you guys were going to bring that up. You had to be uh, greased to get yeah. through the door <laughs> to hop on the mic. Yeah, no, I'm feeling pretty jacked at the moment. But... <laughs> The but, funny thing is, I know the story's not about this at all. <laughs> no, it's a pivotal part of the story. <laughs> it's a, Every time I've told this story so far, which is already a few times, I've had to say, this is a pivotal part of the story. I was working out, and I was working out pretty hard to the point where I probably pushed myself a little further than what I was capable of. Okay, right. And after I've finished the workout, um, I'm like, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to have a sit down outside, crack a bottle of water, and, you know, just sit down and relax. Mm-hmm. So I sit down in this like wicker chair we have that's always outside, you know, braving the elements, mm-hmm. sun, rain, shine, does not matter. It's yeah. always out there. Yeah. And I've sat down and I've cracked my bottle of water and about half a second later, I fall right through the bottom of the chair. <laughs> Jeez. Well, the through, whole chair is broken. The w- through the wicker? Yeah, yeah, through Wait, the wicker. So I'm that ass- jacked. You know, you're not that jacked. It sounds like a fat ass situation. <laughs> <laughs> so you've fallen through Mate, the chair, muscle, ass on the floor. Muscle weighs two <laughs> times as much as fat. <laughs> yeah. Been doing too many squats. <laughs> yeah. So I've gone straight through the bottom of this wicker oh. chair, and I'm sitting there, and I, saw, I had a giggle to myself. I'm like, what are the bloody odds? Was, was it a little bit sharp? Because, you know, the little strands of wicker could jab in your back and stuff? Surprise. Surprisingly not, the whole bottom just came off, so I was okay. It was just ass straight through it, wasn't it? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, straight onto the tiles. That's amazing. Now, can I ask, though, why is the workout a pivotal point of this chat? (laughs) Yeah, I I feel like the workout, you could have just said the story like, oh, I just sat on a chair and it broke. The workout is a pivotal part because, like I said, I pushed myself probably a little bit past my capabilities and my arms were so tired, I couldn't lift myself out of the chair. (laughs) So I'm stuck there, legs hanging in the air, trying to get out. And my arms are so sore. I'm like, God. Mum! So <laughs> Mum! Close enough. I've started Snapchatting my family Snapchat group, asking for help. Like, uh, can someone come outside? I like how that's the emergency group chat. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't call them on their mobiles. Just use the, you can, there's probably about five family members or something in there, yeah. with your cousin included, if she needs to come around. So about, I don't know, a few minutes pass and no one's come out to help me. So I've decided, well, I... I need to take this upon myself. So I've started trying to rock the chair and I've fallen out of it. Like I've thrown the chair into its side and I've crawled out of yeah. the middle of it. And uh, yeah, then I had to tell my mother that I broke her chair. Well, look, I mean, you did get a little brag in there considering it is a quite an embarrassing story because this is relatable. When people break a chair, there's this inner shame that builds up within you that you think, wow, yeah, what re- have I done? There truly was. Uh, and that's why we want to go to the phone lines here. When did the chair break? we got Davin in Oaklands Park. Davin, mate, when did the chair break? Good morning. How are you guys? Yeah, good, good mate. Davin. Yourself? Uh, not too bad. A little bit uh, tired after watching the cricket last night. Yeah, oh, fair, fair enough, enough mate. Bet. Good result, though. Uh, t- yeah, good result. Just trying to paint the picture. Um, we're at the Botanic Gardens just uh, attending a friend's uh, wedding. Beautiful backdrop yeah. and all those white Americana chairs are set up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And my mate, he's a big unit and we're all just sitting there and um, the groom and all the groomsmen are just standing there and the, the bridesmaids have walked down the aisle and then it's that moment where it's the first look at the bride and then the next thing that just 
the guy's chair just proceeds to break, and <laughs> not just a single break, it's multiple breaks. No! Yes. Wow. Yeah, everyone's looking at it. Everyone's looking at him and laughing, and then um, he just proceeds to chuck that straight in the garden in the rose bushes, and then gets another one and sits down just casually. But um, yeah, a good talking point about the wedding. Do you reckon? Do you reckon the bride was a little bit pissed off that he stole the thunder a little bit? <laughs> I uh, I don't know if she reacted because it was just, she was like right at the head, um, okay. just walking down. They probably had to walk about. Uh, 80 metres, so she wouldn't have really realised that just the rest of the guests just laughed the rest of the day and night about it. Davin, it was brave of you, mate, to grab another Americana chair. You'd think you would have gone and sat on a log. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, How no, mortifying. No. <laughs> Where's your titanium bench? <laughs> <laughs> this wedding sucks. Thanks for getting involved, Davin. Hey, we're going to go to Red in Aldingo. Red, mate, when did the chair break? How you going, guys? Yeah, and good. Hey, Red. <laughs> oh, I've got a different one. I used to live in Roxby, and we used to get pretty loose, have some good pool parties, and I landed on a chair, but the chair was in the pool. Ooh, okay. Oh, right. Oh, but yeah. The best part was there was a wool bar next to it, so I didn't, I'm glad I didn't land on that one. Wow, what? so what, what, what was, all was the, going on at this party? Was, there were so many hazards around the <laughs> pool. Why, why were you just Mate. chucking stuff in the pool to see what would float? Rock stars. Oh, I'll be honest, I don't really remember. <laughs> so, did you get an injury? Oh, and there was a pair of undies in the filter. Oh, yeah. Red, I like your energy. <laughs> Red you animal. Got to invite us up to one of those rock Roxy parties. parties. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Michael in Huntfield Heights, when did the chair break? Yeah, g'day, guys. Um, yeah, I was at a, a gentleman's club. Oh, yeah, I know and, the one. Um, <laughs> I was getting a, a bit of a, a private private show, and uh, yeah, lovely. Ooh, must be nice. This, <laughs> this girl came uh, running up and uh, did a bit of a jump, and one of the one of the legs on the chair just completely snapped, and yeah, drinks flew everywhere, and yeah, it's a bit messy. Wow, so <laughs> the, uh, did anyone cop an injury, or you know what happened there? Uh, no, it was just basically uh, just drinks all over the shirt. Um, bit sticky. Well, not hers, obviously, mm. but. Yeah, just mine, but yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, she wasn't uh, She wasn't wearing anything to get sticky, right? The only thing that was her was ego. Ego was bruised. <laughs> Good on you, Michael. Thanks for getting involved. We got Ruth in Aberfoyle Park. <laughs> Ruth, when did the chair break? Good morning. So I was at a family member's wedding, an outside wedding, and they had some wooden chairs around, and I grabbed one to get some better photos, and I'm a big girl. And sure enough, my legs went up. It cracked many times. I went on the ground. Everyone stopped turning around. I missed out on the good photos. Oh, shit, Ruth. I was too embarrassed. Oh, Ruth, oh, no. I'm always... so sorry this happened to you. What what, what was the moments after it happened? What, what what exactly went down? Plenty of champagne. Well, it, well, they were still doing their vows at that exact moment. So oh, the no. video, oh. you hear it cracking and everyone turning around. <laughs> it's always, it's always the, most, uh, the most theatrical when both legs go up at the same time as well. Yeah, geez, yeah. That's a wedding tape to remember for sure. Hey, Ruth, <laughs> I'm so glad that you've got a good attitude about it, having a good laugh. Good on you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ruth. Hey, let's wrap it up with Michael and Prospect. Michael, when did the chair break, mate? Morning, guys. How are we for a Monday? Yeah, good, good, good. mate. And yourself? Yeah, really well, thank you. you. So, uh, a mate of mine from the gym uh, was at his buck show, um, and... At this point in time, there was a dance happening, uh, and his friends thought it'd be a good idea to also pile on. Um, so they've jumped on as well. The chair has snapped, and because he was holding the underneath of the chair with his hands, he broke two fingers on one hand, and oh, one of them mate. happened to be his wedding finger. Oh, so he wasn't able what? to put his wedding ring wow. on in his wedding day. Oh, so he's <laughs> no. ringless on the wedding day. Uh, no, no, no. So he wasn't able to put his ring on on the wedding day because yeah, his finger yeah. was still broken. He couldn't get the surgery in time. So a uh, bit of a stitch up. I don't think his partner was too happy about it, but uh, it makes for a great story all the time. So, What, <laughs> what do they do instead of a ring? Did they put a corsage on him or something? <laughs> something a bit bigger? Uh, no, not at all. Like, yeah, it, it was just one of those things that happened. But, uh, but yeah, it's been, a, it's been a pretty funny story to tell. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, mate, yeah, imagine explaining that to the miso you get home. Well, look. <laughs> Broke yeah. this on a stripper. Yeah, that one's... You're not going to get forgiven quickly for that one. <laughs>
Oh, Dave Tom and Callum podcast. Oh, Dave Tom and Callum podcast. I'll have what she's having. Dave Tom and Callum, the podcast. We are getting towards the silly season. Christmas mm-hmm. time is nearly upon us. In fact, it's just over a month away. And geez, crazy. aren't we feeling it? We're really slogging it to the end. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, finish line. It's a real limp across the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, we are coming towards the end of November, and of course, one of the most important parts of Christmas time, especially <laughs> for all the kids, is Advent calendars. Yeah, yes. sure. If you're unfamiliar with the calendars, just uh, all the days with the chocolates underneath, they're there for a little uh, surprise, and uh, you open it up each day, have a little treat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what a way to explain it. Yeah. Some and people might not have had an Advent calendar before. I think even if they hadn't, they'd know what it is, mate. <laughs> Maybe, not. Maybe not. We are talking about all the different kinds of Advent calendars, because in recent years we're seeing, you know, uh, beauty and skincare industries are starting to do their, throw their hat in the ring of uh, different advent calendars. You can get all sorts of different ones now for all different crazy prices. Yeah, there was that ridiculous one a few years ago. I think it was a chocolate thing and it was over $1,000. Yeah. Wild. Yeah, absolutely Huge. crazy. But this is... I just I was just scouring the internet before and found this incredible brand new advent calendar for the year 2023 and it comes from Yoni Pleasure Palace's Sexy Mystery Advent Calendar. Oh, what a name. I mean, that just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> uh, it's actually from the brains that brought you the iconic fluffy squirt blankets, they're called. Uh, oh, which is, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah, they're a pretty big thing. But um, <laughs> this is a hot new 12-day advent calendar. Uh, so it's not the full 25 days okay. or 24 days. Yeah. But uh, 12 days, and it includes a bunch of different stuff. I can't go into all of them. But okay, so adult toys. A lot of adult toys, and then on top of that, you get things like tassels, uh, <laughs> clamps, get paddles, them for the sauna. ticklers, <laughs> wrist cuffs, masks, whips, and a bunch of other surprises. It sounds like, you know when you have an advent calendar and it's all chocolate, and you have that guilty pleasure moment where you're like, I'm going to have an extra day. It hasn't hit that day yet. I'm going to have an extra one. I wonder, you know, if this is going to have the same guilty pleasure as, <laughs> as, as, as that. You know, you're going to take a few of the toys at once and play around with it for the night. How much does uh, this one set you back? So it does set you back quite a bit of money. It is $444. However... It is worth, with everything inside, about 550 <laughs> So you are getting good bang for your buck here. Geez, really good bang for the buck, as much as the uh, squirt blanket, which is also a big hitter for the company. Yeah, I mean, in the picture shown, they're showing some ball balls by the side. I don't know what you're meant to do with them, but <laughs> I don't know if they're included in the advent <laughs> calendar. I mean, 440 bucks. it's... It's, it's a lot of money, it's, it's isn't it? Steep. But if you're splitting it with a partner, it's a bit better. You wouldn't be buying it if you're single. Well, you reckon? You reckon? <laughs> uh, you reckon? Any, Jeez, dirty Dave. <laughs> any? Any? You know? How, you know? Just offices. You know? Accounting firms and staff will put up an advent chocolate one. Do you reckon anyone's slapping this one up? <laughs> <laughs> I highly doubt it. But if you are interested, uh, yeah, they went on sale November seventeenth. It's Yoni Pleasure Palace sex toy advent calendar valued at uh, five hundred fifty dollars. You can get it for four four. Are they paying you a commission, mate, or what? <laughs> like, gee. Oh, I wish. <laughs> You're listening to Dave Tom and Callum, the podcast. We're putting it to you, Adelaide. Dave Tom and Callum present this or that on Fresh 92.7. Yes, today we need to have a chat about some of the heavy hitters in the food industry of Australia. Now, there has been a raging legal battle happening for the past three years, and that has been between Hungry Jacks... The burgers are better at Hungry Jacks. ...and McDonald's. (laughs) Now, this is over the burger that Hungry Jacks released a few years ago, um, and it had some similarities to the Big Mac... Yeah. And they actually called it the Big Jack. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty on the nose. It was a little on the nose, wasn't it? I loved in this legal battle, though, like Hungry Jacks came out and they said, look, we agree. There is an element of cheekiness <laughs> in the name, I think but the, there's no similarity. I think it's the rhyming as well. Like, if Hungry Jacks came out and just said it's the Big Burger, there wouldn't be any complications, you know? Yeah. It's just the fact that it sounds similar. Or the it Hungry really, Jack. Yeah, you know? yeah, something like that. You know, they really chose the name poorly to, you know, if they wanted to avoid a lawsuit. Poorly or genius? I mean, who knows? It was a, <laughs> it was a heavy hitter for them, mm. but unfortunately, in the end, McDonald's did 
not win the case. But let me tell you, it got scrappy. It got petty. Yeah, right. It was insane. They went, McDonald's like, fine, fine. That's okay about the burger situation, but... We will get them on their advertising because they keep saying there's 25% more Aussie beef okay. in uh, the Hungry Jack's burger. And they said, well, actually, we're going to get the way the scales out oh, and we're going to work it out. And it works out there's only 13.5% difference, <laughs> I, actually. I, I imagine, you know, Ronald McDonald <laughs> and the hamburger are doing, you know, testimonies behind the court desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, fighting it out. But <laughs> and the double agent, the hamburger, <laughs> stealing yeah, Jack's yeah. burgers. But I do think with it, you, when you do go to these takeaway restaurants, you're either staunchly one or the other. And I think there's different sort of um, elements that can contribute to your decision. You know, you've got your food, the food variety, food quality, restaurants and service. You know, how often is the ice cream machine breaking down? Yeah. yeah. How yeah. accessible is it? And also mascots. Yeah, yeah. there's plenty of uh, different <laughs> factors, various <laughs> factors here to consider. But we want to know on the text line, this or that, are you Hungry Jacks or McDonald's? Mm. See, I personally love Hungry Jacks better. Right. I think, uh, I think it just tastes better. I think the quantities are bigger and they have the onion rings. Also, onion rings are I, big. Think, I think this, the onion rings are actually a big factor of it yeah. all. Like, they are so awesome. I agree. And also, don't forget, I do like a Storm better than the McFlurry. What? Yeah. That's know. controversial. That's controversial. I know, I know. Right, I had to Dave. hold my tongue on that one. What about you, Tom? Look, I, I, I'm still undecided. I'm going to need the Fresh Fam's help to make up my mind. Because okay. like Callum said, you have the onion rings. I do love a Whopper, but I'd probably go to Macca's more. Yeah, I sort of agree there. See, McDonald's, there's a bit of loyalty there. It's an overall experience. I love the idea of Ronald McDonald, Grimace, running around. Well, you're like, it's a family business. I feel, I feel at home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they really love you there. It's also always a good time in November down at Macca's. 30 days, 30 deals. Plenty of people getting involved on the text line. Somebody texted in saying, Hungry Jack's burgers are better, Macca's try too hard, keep it simple for fast food. Mm. Yeah, we got another text in here saying, my first job was McDonald's, however, my son's name is Jack, so I like Hungry Jack's much more. And also, HJ st- oh, st- stands for head job, so yep. a good one, Tim. There you go. Uh, Thanks, Tim. C- getting a bit creative there. Hey, we're going to go to <laughs> Shannon in Christie's Beach. Shannon, are you uh, Macca's or Hungry Jack's? Uh, definitely Hungry Jack's. But their coffee is shite. So yeah, okay. Well, that is a big hitter. All the way. Yeah, it's a big hitter of the McDonald's, though, that they have the McCafe and I guess the breakfast menu. All of that wrapped in one is pretty striking. No, the Hungry Jack's breakfast is heaps better. Do you reckon? Oh, okay. interesting. Okay. Better, better than a McMuffin. Oh, the big breakfast wrap. Mm. Yeah, right. So it's just the coffee you prefer? Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay, so but she, but she likes Hungry Jack's best. Likes okay, Hungry Jack's interesting. Best. You know what? Maccas do do a very good coffee. Mm. That has to be put out there. Like, that's that's a well-known fact, isn't it? Hey, we're going to go to Kate over in Nova Gardens. Kate, are you Maccas or Hungry Jacks? Hi. Um, very passionately McDonald's. Yeah, McDonald's. okay. Yeah. And why is that, Kate? Um, I just feel like they are more consistent. And, you know, they actually have some stuff on the menu that is just better. Like, I was getting a chocolate sundae from Hungry Jacks the other day. And the fudge isn't even hot. Like, I just feel like that's a little bit cheap. And Mm. at McDonald's, it's always really hot and they give you heat. Yeah, true. And, I mean, there is a consistency about McDonald's as well. Like, you could go anywhere around the world and it tastes like home. Is that not a scary thing, though, that they all taste the exact same no matter where you are? You don't want to think about (laughs) it, do you? (laughs) Put it in the back of your head. (laughs) All right, Kater for McDonald's. Let's, uh, uh, you know what, we're going to keep the phone lines open, one three hundred seven three seven three seven four. 73 If you have a wavering opinion, call up now, let us know. I'll tell you what, in terms of the fudge and the ice cream, though, I feel like I've had more instances of McDonald's machines not working mm. with ice cream. Yeah, True. it is, a, it is common, especially on a hot day. Yeah. That and the frozen Coke machines always turned off. Hey, Christina in Prospect, can you wrap it up? What are you, this or that? Hungry Jacks or Maccas? Hey. Oh, definitely Hungry Jacks. Yeah. The burgers are better at Hungry yep. Jacks. Talk to me. And the bu- Yep, the burgers at McDonald's, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, taste a bit like plastic. Mm, okay. And honestly, the Big Mac is smaller than an egg. <laughs> okay. It's more than an egg. Jeez, I, I don't know. I feel like the Big Mac's a fairly sized burger. Uh, no, it's too small. Smaller than an ant, mate. It's, it's tiny. <laughs> to be Whopper fair. Whopper all the way. Whopper ev- all the way. Every now and then, McDonald's does bring out a Big Mac 
big edition, so they actually bring out a, 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 the Big Mac, but bigger. Yeah, yeah, bigger one. Mm. I mean, I just I don't want to imagine what kind of ants you got going down in Prospect, Christina. <laughs> Christina. <laughs> yeah, big back size. Yeah. Lethal ants down there. They're going to come swarm your house. <laughs> hey, we've just had Lauren call up. Lauren, this or that, Maccas or Hungos? Hey, I think Maccas all round, but Hungry Jacks does have okay burgers. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, what's your, what's your go-to? Um, I love, uh, they used to have the Rodeo. Oh, yeah, yeah the, very good. The same thing. Is basically the barbecue cheeseburger. Just get the onion rings. Yeah, okay. there's the hot tip here. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you, Lauren? Uh, if you were to put two and two against each other uh, with the nuggets, who has the better nuggets? I think Maccas. Maccas, yeah, yeah. I, agree. I, I would probably swing that way as well. All right, all right, all right. I get older. The Dave O'Tom and Callum podcast stays the same age. Some very bored man has done a lot of maths to work out uh, how long it would take to watch every YouTube video on YouTube. What you don't realise is that Britney's making you all this money and all you do is write a bunch of crap about her. Leave her alone! See, that was a long grab. That was, I mean, producer Sophie, we'll have a chat to her after. I feel like we just asked for the Britney Lee Me Alone part, not the whole video. I didn't realise we were doing the experiment ourselves, trying to watch all the YouTube videos. But of course, that is a classic YouTube video from, what, 2010 or something no, ridiculous? I reckon, I reckon Lee Britney Alone was 20, like 2006 or something. Wow. I reckon it was so old. I reckon that's one of the classic nostalgic ones. Yeah, it is definitely one of the heavy hitters. So this guy's done a bunch of math about how to how long it would take to watch every single YouTube video on the platform. Yeah, how could you possibly do it? And looking at the stats, he has said that about 2,500 videos get uploaded to YouTube every minute. Jeez. So a lot of content. It would be very, very hard to keep up, and the average length of a video is 11.7 minutes. Christ. For this to work, you might need around 30,000 people watching all at once to really bring the numbers down, Yeah, how long you watch it. But the assumption is that it's around 800 million videos are on the site, let's just say that. 800 million videos of absolute, some of it nonsense. terrible, yeah. some of it nonsense. This <laughs> is what we're consuming. I'd say most of the quality, right, would be, you know, surely, crap. surely 60% is crap. Yeah. Side, yeah. <laughs> side note, Chris Crocker's Leave Britney Alone video, 2007. There you go. Fun yeah, fact. Very good. Very close. But yes, if you look at the stats, say there's about 800 million videos on YouTube right now, this minute. That means there's 156 million hours, 6.5 million days, or 17,810 years of watching YouTube videos. Charlie, yeah, Charlie, we're going to Candy Mountain. <laughs> It would take you a hell of a long Rather time. Classic. So if you were by yourself almost 20,000 years to watch every YouTube video, Jeez. and that's without considering that it's still counting. So when you're watching those videos, it's still building up and up. That makes me feel a bit anxious, to be honest. It feels like this never-ending well that we're never going to reach the bottom of. Mm. And even if you had 100 screens, if you had 100 screens <laughs> going at the same time watching all the videos, it would still take 178 years. Press Snape. Dumbledore. Snape. Snape. Severus Snape. Dumbledore. Imagine having to watch all this kind of stuff. I mean, for I feel, 178 years, what purgatory. <laughs> I do feel like a lot of people do watch YouTube now as opposed to TV series. I find I'm always on there watching clips from Say Yes to the Dress. Well, there's plenty of, like, <laughs> plenty of docos and everything as well. There's a lot of long, you know, videos and stuff. But yeah, I guess we've uh, we've got to get around to it. There's a yeah. lot to conquer. I mean, like, the, the thing you're also forgetting about videos on YouTube are, like, the 10-hour loop versions of songs and yeah, stuff. Yeah, literally. Imagine having to sit through that. <laughs> 10 hours. Nah, it's baby one shark thing. on repeat. Oh, it's God, no. It's an experiment you don't want to be a part of. Absolutely not. You're listening to Dave O'Tom and Callum, the podcast. Tough time of year to get into a relationship, I'd say. Uh, you know, heading into a busy season, lots of events, you've got to see friends and family. Well, there is a term that has come out, a dating term, and it is called scrooging. Right. And what that means is that someone wants to dump you before Christmas. <laughs> Hardcore. <laughs> because they don't want you to meet their family and friends and they also don't want to buy your presents. Well, there's a sign in it oh, just there that you just shouldn't be together then. Well, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, what a stupid dating trend. So I guess, yeah, there'd be quite a few signs leading up to the big day, the big day of Christmas. You know, <laughs> would, is it just stuff like, oh, 
the the person stops talking about Christmas, you bring it up, and they're just dead silent. You know, yeah. they try Christmas? to avoid. What's Christmas? Christmas. I'm pagan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do the usual stuff. Well, I guess this is a bit of a PSA. If you have recently started seeing someone, and you know you're heading into the holiday season, you want to sort of be aware of what's going on. And I read this uh, article, and it's basically saying how you can spot a Scrooge and protect yourself from it. So here are some things to keep an eye out if you're recently seeing someone. Your partner becomes cold, distant, or unresponsive. Okay, that could okay. be that could be anything. <laughs> they they no longer call, text, or see you as frequently as they used to. Yeah. Okay. So it's once sort of... again, sounds like someone who just doesn't isn't into you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. None of their scrooges. Imagine, yeah. imagine being confused, thinking the person you're seeing is an absolute scrooge, but they're just you know yeah, yeah. A, bit, a bit like uh, you know reserved. <laughs> oh man, I got scrooged over this Christmas. <laughs> like no, they no, just didn't just like didn't you. like you, mate. <laughs> this one, your companion avoids discussion. Discussing the future or the holidays. Yes, yes. <laughs> Another one. Uh, maybe if you would like to avoid it, they say make no mention of buying gifts exchange. <laughs> well, so they say. Well, they're saying this is how you detect a Scrooge. Now, if you do want to be a Scrooge, this is how you go about it. Yeah, and no, no. This is saying if you. Um, yeah, no, no, no. They're saying this is the way that you can sort of avoid them okay. scrooging yep, yep, you. Yep. Saying you don't mention gifts or Christmas around them. Get oh, on okay. the front foot. Yep. Dump them first. It also says if your partner chooses to. Fight, don't fight back. <laughs> be be passive. Uh, get on the front foot. Be as meek and mild as you possibly can <laughs> until rolls. you get through the holidays. <laughs> what, but what about all the other holidays? Then you got Easter to worry about. <laughs> yeah, you got a few. Yeah, what about the birthdays? Absolute nightmare. Sometimes me think, what is friend? Then me say, friend is someone to listen to Dave or Tom and Callum podcast. Mmm, cookie. Nom, 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 nom. When you start seeing someone or getting into a bit of a relationship situation, you're obviously putting your best foot forward. Yeah. You know, you're probably masking that you're a really lovely person. You There's don't nothing... show any of the red flags. No way. No. You keep that stuff deep. Yeah, yeah. You Bottled bury up. that down. Until you're finally with them and then you let it all <laughs> out. <laughs> and then they leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tuck those red flags in your pants. Don't, don't expose them. Absolutely. Is that where you keep yours? Yeah, yeah. In the underpants, <laughs> which is also a red flag <laughs> in itself. Well, you know, there's also that whole thing of when you start seeing someone, you sort of want to mirror what they do or what they like, so then you're more appealing to them, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that's a ph- ph- Why do I always Phenomenal. <laughs> Why do I always reach for that word when I know I cannot say it? I don't know. It's like one um, of these days you're going to say it, and I have a surprise ready for you. Yeah, Yeah. it's like it gives Nemo what is that an enemy (laughs) vibe? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But we are talking about, of course, our friend here, Callum Leaney, who has started seeing someone of recent times. Um, He's on the dating scene. He's given it heaps. He's working the room. Taken. Don't text it anymore, girls. Phone lines are blocked. (laughs) And something has changed within Callum recently. He's changed his interests. He's changed the way he's living his life. And what he's doing is he's attending multiple (laughs) drum and bass shows. But on top of the drum and bass shows that he started, last week he mentioned to us that he's considering being a drum and bass DJ. Oh, okay. I didn't say a drum. I didn't. I didn't say a drum and bass DJ. I said loosely that hey, next year I'd like to save up for some cheap decks and give it a whirl. I didn't say it would be drum and bass specifically. Mm, interesting but though. I, said, like, I could mm. be doing show tunes. I don't know. That don't impress me. You're doing it to impress a girl. Uh, I wouldn't, I don't know. So the thing is, you've come out and you've, <laughs> you've accused me of saying, you know, I'm uh, getting into the drum and bass scene to impress this girl. I actually don't mind drum and bass. I quite like it. Yeah, okay. Tom, you know this man. I mean, it is. you have gone to a lot of DMB nights in the past couple months when you started seeing this girl. I'd say, yeah. Look, I don't I'd think say... you'd ever been to a DMB <laughs> night before that. But I, I always like drum and bass. It's not like I'm, you know, you know, gravitate into a new genre like I'm into Christian rock now. I don't know. To impress this girl. Six months ago it was goth music, you know what I mean? (laughs) If you know what I mean. (laughs) What did you do to impress him, Adelaide? That don't impress me much. This text just came through. 
Absolutely insane. Uh, it goes to impress a girl I liked. I said I had a pet cat and she should come over and play with it. Problem is, I didn't have a cat <laughs> and I'm allergic to cats. She agreed to come around, so I adopted a cat. <gasps> Long story short, we didn't end up together, and now I have a cat and have to take hay fever tablets daily. <laughs> that's... That don't impress me much. It's such a huge call, and, you know, it's one of those moments that surely the dude is contemplating, you know, as you're sending that message, when you're about to hit send, yeah. is this a good idea? Will I have to get a cat for this? At least now you have a cat for future endeavours. True. You know? uh, he can, he can only go after cat girls now. Yeah. <laughs> Surely it'll pay off. I mean, all those hay fever tablets, that's not cheap, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, we're going to go to Sam in Albert Park. Sam, what did you do to impress him? Good morning. Good morning. Um, look, obviously, he's not in the car at the moment because I'm a huge fresh fan. <laughs> but he, he is not. And I found myself switching off the station before I get out of the car so that when he jumps in, it's like on his station. And it's like, boom, yeah, I've been listening to this the whole time. I love this station so much. <laughs> Does that mean, uh, would, he, would he ever quiz you on your favourite rock tunes or something like that from other stations? Do you have to pretend to like other bands as well? I, I do have to pretend to like other bands. We've been talking about going to like country music festivals and really I'd love to be going to Wildland, but hey, you know. <laughs> I love Slim Dusty. Hey Sam, how long has this been going on for with this, this bloke? Look, it's about three or four months in. It, it's still pretty new. It's, it's still pretty fresh. Like, long enough to like it's going to be going on forever though. Like, <laughs> Sam, I don't know though. If he's not aligning with your fresh values, I reckon give him the flick. <laughs> <laughs> fresh above all. <laughs> Absolutely. I think just drip feed him a bit of fresh. <laughs> Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.